Hi guys, welcome to Tuchel for Middle School. Welcome to my classroom at the end of the year. I'm doing Darren's end of the year teacher tag. I thought this was such a good idea. All of us are in like this weird place where we still have stuff that we need to get done. Our kids really know our routines, but they're also getting kind of squirrely. So it's a good time for a teacher tag. I actually never do any kind of a countdown or really look forward too much to the end of the year. I always teach summer school or do some kind of a summer program, so it never even like gets me all that excited that it's about to be summer. So I don't know how many days we have left. I just know that now we are done with state testing and we have time to do like one more unit in each class. All right, so I've got the questions right here. Let me see. Number one is what grade do you teach and how long have you taught that grade? I teach sixth grade history and English and eighth grade English and actually since the beginning of my teaching career which was six years ago I've always taught those two grade levels or at least one of those two grade levels for some reason I never end up in seventh while I've been in middle school so I always have sixth and eighth what adjective best describes you as a teacher and why I think I would say passionate I'm passionate about everything like I'm passionate about the pencils that we have, I'm passionate about the color scheme, I'm passionate about the content, I'm passionate about my kids. Sometimes I can probably be a little bit intense, but definitely passionate about everything. If your life as a teacher was made into a movie, what movie star would play you? Well, if Gabby Diaz ever becomes an actress, in addition to being a dancer, it would definitely be her because we look super alike. So many people have told me that, and you know, a lot of times when people tell you you look like someone, you're like, mm, I don't really see it, but with her, Yes. There's also this actress named Jana Kramer, Jenna Kramer. Someone told me the other day I looked just like her and then I looked her up and I was like, oh yeah, okay. So one of those two. <laughs> Number four, think of a lesson from this year that you're especially proud of and what made it so special. Um, my kids did a lot with vocabulary this year and they wrote their own rap and submitted it to vocabulary and they won the weekend rap shout out contest and then we made this really cool video with all this colored powder that we threw up in the air and we used a drone and that was just really fun because we incorporated so many different things. It was for history class but we also incorporated English and writing raps and working together and technology and making a video and it was really fun for the kids to be able to see themselves celebrated for that and to get a shout out on a vocabulary video so I recorded the whole process of doing that so I'll link that video for you that was a really really fun lesson and another thing that I love that Darren actually introduced me to was doing Google Hangouts with other classes and every one of my classes got to do a Google Hangout this year usually with like a geography theme kind of challenge that they did with another class somewhere else so that was really cool too I, I will make a video about all of our Google Hangouts I've been saving up footage for the whole entire year so soon I will do that. Number five is think of a student that you think you'll likely remember forever. Oh there's so many this year. I have so many sweet girls that are just really mature and have had amazing comments and conversations in class. I have a couple of really creative kids that for example in the video for vocabulary they put in a lot of work and their creativity just got to shine and those kind of things. I had a girl today who doesn't talk, um, write me a letter, and it was just so sweet to hear what's going on inside of her mind. That was really special, like that's a card that I will keep forever. So I've had such good classes this year. I've had so many amazing kids. You know how some years are like rough, like you just get a rough class? This year has been the year of all great classes. <laughs> Number six, at this point in the year, how do you feel about the teaching profession? feel great about it. I feel like this is where I am supposed to be and I can't wait till next year. Number seven, how do you keep your job fun and engaging no matter how long you've been teaching? Well, even though I've been teaching for, what, six years, I rarely get to teach the same thing more than once in a row. I'm always getting like new curriculum or new subject matter to teach or new grade levels to teach. So for me, everything always feels fun and engaging because it's always brand new. But even if, you know, I'm established at this school one day and I get maybe just like one class that I teach all day like the same um, subject matter all day and the same grade level I wouldn't want it to get boring so I would still continue to infuse um, well I really love to bring like current events into the classroom and bring in new like poems or stories or things that I've found that I think are really engaging and just bring that into my classroom so um, yeah, I don't think I could ever just teach the exact same lesson every day over and over for years. I'm always going to bring in new stuff. 
Number eight, what has surprised you the most since the school year started? I taught ancient world history for sixth grade this year, and I'm surprised how much I love it. My favorite is teaching US history or world history in 10th grade. Um, so I was like, all right, sixth grade, ancient history, like I'll figure this out. I have loved it. Um, the content was new to me, like as a teacher, you know, trying to figure out how to cover like ancient Greece and ancient India and ancient China and the early, oh, like early humans, that was the hardest part. I don't know a ton about that. That's more like archeology span specialty more than historian. So that was a little bit tough, but I really had to find ways to keep it engaging and for the kids to really be getting something out of it. So that was so fun. And then definitely teaching ancient China and ancient India. So many of my students know a lot about those cultures because that's their heritage. So they brought in so many cool resources and cool stories. And I absolutely loved that. And I actually can't wait until next year so that I can infuse even more of that into our lessons and do like a Chinese New Year celebration. Oh, we did a Hanukkah celebration and we made latkes and we played dreidel and that was really really fun too we just had every unit i feel like just had something really special about it number nine is about social media who are your favorite teacher youtubers teacher instagrammers and teacher tweeters i love teacher social media um, some of my favorite teacher youtubers are darren of course there's a channel called history with tiffany if you are into history if, if you teach history she has so many videos about like every single topic that you would ever teach in history so definitely check out her channel teacher instagram is such a fun place to connect with people um a couple of my favorite teacher instagrammers are marty in the middle i just think she's so cute and she does so many fun things every day and i get so many messages actually asking me if i know of any um, middle school science teacher accounts. She is a science teacher, so follow her. I also love just like the aesthetic of Little Miss Fiesta. Her account is beautiful and she actually just moved to England. So now she's got like a whole new set of gorgeous photos from England and Paris and I just love everything she posts. I'm not as active on Twitter as I should be, but one of my coworkers is really active on Twitter and she finds everything good for me. Um, her handle is history frog. So definitely go follow her for good history information. Number 10, who would your dream teacher collaboration be with? <sighs> you know who I wish I could do a collaboration video with is my husband. He is one of the best teachers ever. One of the best teachers I've ever seen. He currently teaches PE, but he's taught a bunch of other subjects and I would love to do like the teacher BFF tag with him or like the teacher partner tag, but he's so like anti-social media, anti having all of his business out there. So I'm still working on him, but if he ever agreed to do a video with me, I would, I would love it. What is the last thing you took a picture of? Show us. Ooh. Oh, you know what I just took pictures of? Um, are my Farewell to Manzanar books and these little bookmarks that I made with the kids' Snapchat pictures. So I'll be able to tell whose book is whose because I keep them in my classroom because they are mine, they belong to me. So um, yeah, I was gonna put those on Instagram. <laughs> Seeing the last song you listened to. Oh, all right, well, let's see. On my way to work, I was listening to the In the Heights soundtrack, which is what I listen to pretty much all the time when I'm in my car, trying to like, you know, get it into Jensen's brain so that he loves Lin-Manuel Miranda and musical theater. He already loves Moana and that's Lin-Manuel Miranda. So it'll be an easy jump. The song I was listening to is about like winning the lottery. Um, and so most of it is wrapped, but the girls come in for a minute. Oh, is it Vanessa? Yeah, Vanessa comes in and she goes, if I win the lottery, you'll never see me again. It's very dramatic. I actually kind of don't like that part, but it fits within like the layers that they do later. Hers kind of has to be like the slow part and then everybody else layers on top of hers, but hers is so dramatic. I'm like, come on. But I love that Usnavi is like, we were only joking, stay broke then. Such a good musical. I want to see it in live. I have not seen it yet. Okay, number 13, complete this sentence. If I weren't a teacher, I'd be, I wish Broadway star. If only I had invested my whole life in that. But because I'm not that much of a risk taker, I probably would have gone into law or journalism. I kind of still like wish that I had gone into those fields sometimes, only sometimes. I know that this is where I'm supposed to be, but I think I would have made a really good lawyer or a really good journalist. And I still love to like research and write. And that's something that I can still do as a teacher. So 
I like that about teaching is that um, you can have a lot of things going on on the side that you are passionate about because I am passionate about everything. <laughs> okay, um, number 14, who is your teaching hero? Tell them one thing that you really appreciate about them. You know what? I loved a lot of my professors from college and like from my master's program specifically. And I know that there's this stereotype, well, I mean, it's actually probably true in a lot of cases that like college professors are really not good teachers. They know their content and they're smart, but a lot of times they they don't make that very engaging in the classroom. But I had several professors in college who were just incredible. Dr. Brunel was one of them. She taught me how to write like a historian and think like a historian and write clearly. And one of the things that was really helpful that she explained to our class was that history is like a city. Knowledge is like a city and there are different freeways and different side streets and those are, you know, like maybe like ancient history and world history and you know, okay, you pick your freeway, like this is your area of interest, and then you take that exit on the freeway and here's a little bit more of your specialty. And then there's a building, okay, so you write about this specific time period in this specific area. Um, but then your contribution is just a brick <laughs> to that building. Like you don't have to cover everything. You just have to write your brick and help to build that house or that building and if people come to your neighborhood and to your specialty and they want to find something you've contributed to that body of work but you don't have to cover everything you can you can be a specialist and you can be just really passionate about one thing and maybe if you're lucky you get to write a couple of bricks and you get to contribute a little bit more to this building but as one person that's your only job and i like that way of thinking about it i thought that was helpful. I had a couple of other professors. Um, Dr. Zakair was my uh, master's thesis advisor and he just helped me to think through um, the whole neighborhood a little bit more when I was writing my brick about the Virgin Islands and he made sure that I was connecting that to like the history of Puerto Rico and Cuba and other Caribbean islands and just making sure that I, I did keep a, a wider perspective even as I was writing my one little piece. So I, I just really appreciate those teachers and professors that like really challenged me and really brought the best out of me. And that's what I strive to do with my students. I know that in middle school you don't get to choose your area of expertise as much as you do in grad school, but to bring in a little bit of that and a little bit of that ownership of what you're interested in and what you like to write about, I think is something good that I could do in middle school with my kids. So anyway, thank you so much to Darren for starting this tag. I'm gonna go get a little bit more work done. We've got all these projects and units and just things to wrap up at the end of the year. So thank you for watching guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye.